Welcome to Refresh. This is Pastor Kim Robinson. It's my desire that you listen, that you can experience blessed faith and creative life with this Kicks Ministries and Victory Harvest Church podcast. Colossians 2, 6 through 10, my opening scripture. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so ye walk in him. So walk ye in him. Receive his word and walk in him and his word. That law of receiving through the eyes, through the ears, through the mouth, in the heart, coming to renewing the mind, the seed of the word of God, the seed of Jesus in your life, as you have received him through your eyes, through your ears, through your mouth, confessing him as Lord, Romans 10, 9 and 10, into your heart, renewing your mind as you have received Christ Jesus. Walk ye in him, walk, movement, move in him. Verse seven, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. You are rooted in him and established in faith. As ye have been taught, abounding there and with thanksgiving. What are the principles? You can stand in the word of God in Christ, walking in him, established in that faith, abounding in that faith with thanksgiving, where you've been taught by the Holy Spirit. You know, I could stand here and preach the gospel, but something will go off inside of you. And that's the Holy Spirit in you, working in you, bringing it before you, the Holy Spirit speaking that you don't have to be taught by any man. You hear what I'm saying, but it's the Holy Spirit that is teaching you. It's the Holy Spirit that's bringing his revelation to you. And it goes on in verse eight of Colossians three, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. What is the enemy of the message of faith is traditions of men, philosophy and vain deceit that wants to spoil you to not go after Christ. Verse nine, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You're complete in him. You're not getting complete. You're not working out completion. You're not trying to be complete. You are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. The enemy has already been destroyed. You are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and you are complete in him. You are the top dog. He made it to be that way from the beginning. But Adam and Eve buckled. They buckled under that. They took a hold of something. They turned from knowing him to knowing good and evil. And from that day forward, man has tried to build a kingdom in his own efforts. God had to put them out of the garden so they wouldn't live forever trying it on their own. And they went and what did they do? They started to till the land. They had to come into a place of working without God because they became as us, the Bible says. God speaking of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They became in charge of everything, exalting themselves because the serpent said it. He said, if you eat of this, you'll be like God or you will be a God. We are actually made in his image. But they took a different position, putting themselves in the knowledge and leaning on their own understanding, making it happen on their own. Not being complete in him any longer, but completing everything through their own efforts. Why do we look at religion, politics, our own efforts, climbing corporate ladders, wanting to be complete, wanting to go after something. But when you're complete in him, everything you do prospers. So Colossians 3.10 is where I'm headed. 
my focal point. And have put on the new man, which is renewed after the image of him that created him. That, what I said before was Colossians 2, 6 through 10. Now it's Colossians 3, 10. You have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Let's take a look at this. We've put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image that created him. This is something new. Adam and Eve did something and Jesus came and he reestablished it. So he gave us a new man created now in the image of him, which they were created in the image of God. Man's created in the image of God, but something took place. So in Colossians 3.10, we are made after the image of him. I want you to look at this. Made after the image. Who is the image? Made after the image of him that created him. There's three things being said here. Three, three personalities being revealed. All right? And that is made after the image of him, created of him. And who is the him? Made after the image of him is Jesus. That created is the father, the creator, and him is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So Colossians 3.10. And having put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. We're made after that image. And the image is after the image of him that created him. The him is Jesus. The, that created is the father that created him, the Holy Spirit, the image of him. It's the fullness of the Godhead, the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. We are created in that image. We are three parts. We are, we have a body. I mean, we live in a body. We have a soul and we are a spirit. God breathed his breath in us and we have the breath of God, the Holy Spirit of life quickening inside of us. And we have the mind, the will and emotion, the soul, the creator. We are creative and we live in a body. Jesus is the body that God came in to reveal who he was to the world. We reveal Jesus. We are creative and we are full of the breath of God. That's the image of the new man. That's the image we were created in in the beginning. And we're renewed in the knowledge after that image. So as we preach creation and we preach, preach the image and we preach who he is, There has, there's going to be a movement of him, a revelation of the knowledge after the image of him. Colossians 3, 1 says, If ye be then risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Looking above, we are above and not beneath. We are risen in him when we accept him as our savior and we accept and receive who he is. Now, Colossians 3, 10 through 17 says something, but I want you to look at verse 11. It's very key. Colossians 3, 10, again, it says, we've put on the new man. We know from Colossians 1 that we're risen in him. So these are, this is speaking of the people who've received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they've put on a new man and they're renewed in the knowledge after the image of God. The image seen in the sun, the image of the creator, the image of the spirit. And in verse 11, it says, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. There is no separation of people and nations. It goes on in verse 12, it says, put on therefore as the elect, put on therefore as the elect. Put on Christ, put on love, put on mercy, kindness, the fruits of the spirit. That's the spirit of God working through you. Put them on. Verse 14, it says, above all these things, put on love, 
which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which you also are called in one body, one, no separation. And in verse 16, he tells us how, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father and Him. This is a movement, the movement of the image of God, the Creator, the image of God, who He is, being revealed to the world. And there's no separation. When you receive Jesus, that division of nations goes away. Look at the categories of people, He said. And let's look at what they mean. He said there's no no differentiation between Greek and Jew. Greek, in the wider sense, as you look this up in the Greek, in the wider sense, it means that it embraces all nations. It's meant to embrace the world. So there's no separation in the world or of these nations in Christ. And that's everyone outside of the Jewish nation. Then he says there's no separation. The Jewish nation isn't exalted above everyone else. So he said there's no differentiation between Greek and Jew. The whole entire world and the Jew. Then he talked about circumcision and uncircumcision. Well, the circumcision, again, is the term used for the Jews. But it also includes, according to the Greek definition, Christians who's gathered from among the Jews. So people who've come and been grafted in. So he's saying there's no separation here. Now, these are for people who are in Christ. You're going to find division outside of him. The word of God says he has broken down every wall of division. Then uncircumcision represents the Gentile, or it represents a condition that's corrupt, people in sin, or rooted in the flesh, carnalities and living as the world. So you have him explaining everyone in the world, there's no differentiation between them and the promise, because in Christ you come in and grafted in to him who he is. Then there's no separation between the circumcision or the the sinners, so to speak, (laughs) the corrupt desires and the circumcision, meaning in him there is grace and mercy And we are all circumcised into the body of Jesus Christ. Then he used the word barbarian and Scythian. So out he, and what he's talking about is people coming out of these things. Paul said, I'm the best of them all. And then coming out of the barbarian and Scythius. These are the rude, the rough, the harsh. They don't understand each other. And it was, this word was used by the Greeks to represent foreigners ignorant to the Greek language. And they were basically rude and brutal. And it says clearly in the Greek definition of the word that it was in the New Testament without the idea of reproachfulness. It wasn't reproaching anyone. It was bringing a description. And the Scythian was, again, rude and rough. And they were the inhabitants of Scythia or what's called modern-day Russia. And they were required, they were regarded as the wildest of barbarians. So basically, in these first things I've described, he is saying the whole entire world and the Jew that he lifted out. There's no differentiation. No differentiation. Because we've put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that he created. So I want to break down this scripture. And there are five fabulous parts of faith, I'll call it. Now, fabulous can be taken negatively in reality and mythical. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about the other two definitions of fabulous. That's amazingly good, wonderful, extraordinary, and extraordinarily large. Fabulous five parts of faith found in Colossians 3.10. And you have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him, making one in Christ. As we embrace the renewed knowledge in him of the, after the image as we embrace him. Part one, I'm going to break it down in the Greek. We have put on that word's in duo. It means in the sense of sinking into a garment. 
So it's not works religiously putting on, I'm going to act like Jesus, do what Jesus did, and be like Jesus in all my own efforts. No, it's sink into him. Sink in. Fall into him. Without, without concern. Sink in. Jump into the deep, the word of God says. Don't, don't sit around the side of the pool just, you know, putting your feet in. And then don't just go wade in the little pool where you go up to your knees. And then don't decide to be in the shallow where you're around your waist and, you know, just kind of keep it where you're in control. Sink in. Put on the new man. Sink into it. Jump in. Go all the way. Go after it. Because you find the fullness of the image of, the, of him that created him. And then, of course, the word the new. Put on new. What is that? All things are made new in him. Pa- putting off the old. When you sink into the new, the old leaves. But sink in to the new. What is the new? It's renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. So it says, and have put on the new man. These two words in the Greek go together. Man, which that word is ha. And have put on the new ha. And it defines as a designated person or thing that is only one of its kind. Put on man, which put on a person or thing who is Jesus only one of its kind. And it goes on to say, it distinguishes the same from all other persons or things. Distinguishing him. And then it goes on to describe, it's names of persons and things definite enough in themselves. Or in other words, well known from history. So here, you've got somebody who's well known. I think the name of Jesus and who he is is worldwide known. Wouldn't you? Well, we're, we are putting on the new man, which he has given. And it's renewed in the knowledge after the one. <laughs> it's renewed. We're going to get there. And this is a well-known person who has and is to come, the Messiah. This all is in man which. This is all in the word ha. And it's meaning the salvation which all good men hope for in the messianic salvation. But it also means the cloud. You're putting on ha. You're putting on the cloud, which is well known, it says, from the Old Testament. You're putting on the glory of God. He is the glory. We don't need gold dust, guys. We have him. We have the ha. We have the person that stands out. We have the person that's distinguished. We have the person that is one of his kind. We have the person who is known through history, his virtues and all that he is, it says. We have the person who has and is to come. We have the person of salvation, which all good men hope for. We have the person of the cloud, the glory. And Corinthians 10.1 says, Brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all your fathers were under that cloud. We are in the cloud, of the cloud, living and breathing the cloud, the glory of God, the salvation of God. We have put on the new man, which, which what? Is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. So part two, that was my part one of my fabulous faith points. <laughs> part two is renewed. Anakai nao. It's a word particular to the Apostle Paul. He used it. And when he wrote is renewed, that Greek word that he used meant to grow up in, passively be, uh, not passively like passive, lazy, but come forth, passive meaning lay off the old works, Stepping in, letting him be all your effort. And it means new strength and vigor given to you. Reflecting on 2 Corinthians 4, 16, being changed into a new kind of life opposed from the corrupt state, 
but it says the inward man is renewed day by day. So Paul used this word could, uh, by the leading of the Holy Spirit to say you are renewed in Christ day by day with strength and vigor and all that he is. And it says here that we are renewed over and over, fresh every day in what? In knowledge after the image of him that created him. So that word in here is the word ice. It means reaching something, entering into something. It means a place, a time of purpose. So we are renewed in a place, a time, a purpose. We have reached and entered into something. And it's, that word ice means <coughs> a result abundantly. It means among, throughout, toward, in, before, by, concerning, continually, more exceedingly for the intent of and even one mind. So we are completely entering in, placed in time and purpose, abundantly, even to the intent of our mind, renewed in what? What are we completely Im immersed in? Part three. The knowledge, the apignosis, the knowledge of the divine, the knowledge of the person and the things of the Lord known, the knowledge of who he is and all the blessings of God. That's what the Greek means. Bestowed and continuously bestows on men through Jesus Christ. The knowledge in Matthew 16, Jesus said to Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are Christ, the one that removes burdens, destroys yokes. You're the cloud. You're the glory. You're the bread of life. You are the one. You are the blessing. You are the face of God. You are Messiah. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but the father that's in heaven. That knowledge of the image of the son of God. That knowledge was bringing forth and birthing new man. Jesus revealed. Ephesians 17 through 20. That the Lord God of our, the, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's, what the world needs. That the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, the hope of Jesus calling, the hope of his calling for you, and what the riches of the glory of his, his inheritance in the saints. He has an inheritance in the in you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The inheritance of the saints and the hope of his calling that we would have that revelation in the knowledge of him, that spirit of wisdom and revelation verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness to his power towards us? The greatness of his power towards us. The Romans one says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, the power of unto, uh, a power of God unto blessing that power, that exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. That is the stipulation who believe whosoever believeth on me according to the working of his mighty power. The exceeding greatness of his power towards us and even in our believing, it's according to the working of his mighty power of faith in us. It's no longer, Galatians 2.20, it's no longer I who live, but I live by the faith that is in Christ. And verse 20, which he wrought in Christ, he did all this in him when he raised him from the dead and set him at the right hand, at his own right hand in heavenly places. And again, we said earlier from the beginning scripture, when I get there, as ye have therefore received Jesus, walk in him and having put on the new man. For if we are raised with him, Colossians 3, 1, if you've risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, which Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. 
And here we are saying that he has been raised and he has put been put at the right hand of God seated in heavenly places, the knowledge of Christ, the true knowledge of Christ's nature, his dignity and his benefits. Second Peter one, two through four says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord, according to his divine power, has he given us, given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to the glory and virtue through this knowledge of him, multiplied to you. It's multiplied to you through the knowledge of him, through the revelation that you, and where do you find that revelation? Two ways. It's called the rhema and the logos. The rhema is the word of God coming to you by the power of the Holy Spirit speaking in your life. But in he, he, the Holy Spirit never goes contrary to the logos, the written word of God. And that knowledge of God through the Lord Jesus Christ comes through his word and the Holy Spirit revealing himself to you. Just like I'm speaking here so that people would hear, it says, how would they be saved unless someone is gone and preaches and speaks? How beautiful are the feet of them that bring good news? Why? Is it the man that's exalted? No, it's the word that's being exalted that people hear and the Holy Spirit brings increase in their hearts. And grace and peace is multiplied according to his divine power. And he gives unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. What is the church preaching right now? We have to preach the knowledge of God, the, of the, who Jesus is. We have to preach the revelation knowledge of God. We have to preach the image of God, who he is. Because verse four of Peter, whereby are you given, uh, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we are partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Lust is what gets you into the world system and pride of life. The Bible says lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes and pride of life. If you go back again to the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you find it looked good to their eyes, lust of the eyes. It tasted good, it lust to the flesh, and it would make them know and be like God, pride of life. It's all in that description. And it tells us in the New Testament that that's the way Satan works, through pride of life, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. You may think lust is only one way. The lust goes so many aspects of a, in every way. Part four, abounding in you and having put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image that created him. Ephesians uh, or second Peter one, eight and 11. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. These things are abounding in you. You're putting on the new man, renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him, and you are neither barren nor fruitful in the knowledge of him. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In that image of him, in that knowledge of him, there is an entrance for you abundantly with the everlasting, in the everlasting kingdom. Forever and here on this earth, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And 2 Peter 1, 2 says, grace and peace again is multiplied to you through that knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Romans 1, 28, you can find that the world, what happens is they end up going the wrong direction because it says in Romans 1, 28, that they didn't retain, they rejected God in their knowledge and they gave him up. So the knowledge that they have of good and evil, they define what's good, what's bad. And then they, you make laws that say, this is good, this is right, this is bad. No, the one we serve and uphold is Jesus Christ. Part five, after the image of him. That word after means, it's kata. Down, from, throughout, according to, towards, along, following the same matter, manner, daily, mightily, in the uttermost. It means all of him, in place, in time, joined with, according to, touching together, even the like, the same exceedingly and more excellent beyond 
whereby beyond measure, after, beyond measure, you are going beyond measure of the image of him. And that image of him is the word icon or icon. It means the complete likeness of him, renewed in him, transformed in him, seen in him. The representation and manifestation of him that created, that is, Katizo, creator, who made, created, formed, and shaped, and completely changed or transformed. Creator, we are in the complete oneness, likeness of him, the creator. And that word him, I know I'm breaking it down where it's a little bit, it could be a little bit confusing, but it's after the image of him that created him is what we're in. The image after is according to with joined together. The image of him is one word icon in that fullness of renewness of who he is that created. That is that word created means creator katizo. It is in the image of the creator and of him. And that word him in the Greek is defined and I'm closing through the idea of a baffling wind. The Holy Spirit, the breath of life. It means of self. It's used in the third person, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And with of the other persons, of self, one to the other, to mind, to all. We're made after the image of the Creator, of Jesus, of that baffling wind of the Holy Spirit, riding on the wings of His wind putting on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge and after the image of him that created him. We have the image of the son, Jesus. We have the image of the creator. We have the image of the Holy Spirit, the image of him. And we put him on, we sink deep into it. And he is revealed to the world. As you move forward in purpose and calling, The world sees his cloud, his glory that you are encompassed in. As we engulf ourselves in him, the blessing of salvation, that cloud of glory, all that he is, all that he has done, seated us above and not beneath. (coughs) We've got the ball. We're throwing the ball. That offensive game in football. We're not the defensive end. We're making a pass. And we're going into all the world and preaching the gospel because in him, there's no separation. It is a worldwide message that we become one body in Christ because we are all in him as we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Father, I pray, Lord, that as people hear this message, they see and hear you and experience the new man renewed in the knowledge after Jesus, after your image, after the Creator, after the Holy Spirit, after you who have done it all. I pray Jesus be revealed. I pray, Father God, Holy Spirit, that you move in the hearts of people and that they see clearly who you are and what you have for them. In Jesus, in your work, in your glory, from the beginning to the end, the Alpha, the Omega, the finished work of God, that people can receive. They can receive all you have done for them individually. In Jesus' name, amen.